Hello, I'd like to give you some feedback of the rounding up activity that you had to create a chart summarizing the main themes of chapters one and two. And I'd like to build out on four of the questions that you had. The first one was, describe how business organizes and communicates strategically. One of your classmates said that business holds performance meetings to share with the employees how that business is faring as a whole. You and I think that that's normal, but when I was with Shell Oil, I had a, cu a customer in Canada that did not share with employees any information about their productivity. And this is referring to the <clears throat> oil sands project that's been in the news around the Excel pipeline. I actually worked up there. And one of the uh, businesses did not want to publish daily production requirements because it was so sensitive of material. I suggested that as an outside communication specialist brought in to help them develop a communication plan, but it was rejected. They did not want employees to know what the production requirements were since it was sensitive information, kind of like a top secret about their production. Second question, describe, describe the role of individual contributors to strategic policy. Someone noted that individuals have to use their knowledge of the organization, and I really do agree with that. But your knowledge is not just what you do. More importantly, it's what comes before you and after you. The term we'll say is upstream and downstream. What people have to do to get their work to you, what you do with it, and when you send it on, what the next person does with it. That cross-fertilization of information makes you a more uh, important employee because then you can make suggestions on how to make uh, revisions in that process. Another individual said, when you build a policy for your company, you expect your employees to follow those policies. So the role of the individual for that company, it will be to follow the, the policy so the company can grow. I agree. However, I don't want to rule out bottom-up change, change that folks at the bottom of the feeding chain thinks needed and feel that they are comfortable enough to pass on their suggestions. I tell the face-to-face -face class students that it's fine if you don't like something, but you're gonna to have to make an alternative proposal. And I was pretty proud that uh, last semester I had a class face-to-face -face that wasn't happy with the grades, and they made a proposal on how I could adjust that. I accepted one of the proposals, and I rejected the other proposal after consulting with my colleagues. Another individual points out that individuals have to not just understand the hows of the plan, but the whys of the plan. In other words, the business case for doing what you're doing. I agree. If people understand uh, uh, the deep structure of it, they're more likely to be committed to it. Another individual pointed out that the employee brings with them a certain interpretation of events. This is so true. We can be sitting in the same meeting and walk away with different interpretation of what we just heard. Pluses, minuses, uh, successes, and failures. Number three, describe the role of diversity. This is a critical piece because if everyone in an organization is the same and thinks the same, you won't see the uh, problems coming at you. That's why I say in Shell Oil, folks like myself that are people skills, that have strength in people skills, 
were welcomed by uh, a set of engineers who worked off spreadsheets. They wanted a diversified point of view. That's also why at least some companies want you to move across in vertical transfers, horizontal transfers, as well as vertical transfers, so that you understand broad pieces of the business, so that you will develop your expertise in the business as a whole, just as you have developed your specialization. Finally, define the role of assumptions in developing a strategic policy. One individual gave an engineer's reply. You need to make assumptions based off factual data to plan for the future. Well, the factual data told Texas and Louisiana that they were going to be rolling in dough because of oil. And now the layoffs are there, the funding is gone, and austerity is coming. So sometimes the facts don't bear themselves out because the assumptions were wrong. And when it comes to individuals working on individual issues, you have to remember that people's assumptions can differ. And that's one of the communication pieces we say. Ask an individual, what information are you looking at that has you draw that conclusion? You can often discover they're not looking at the same information at all. Well, while there were many questions, I decided to focus on four of them to build out on your comments. I hope this has uh, helped you think a little bit more about global business communication.